this lecture we are going to go through some of the very important concepts concepts which are required for sustaining this particular revolution the industry 4.0 revolution so basically what is required is not just the development development in terms of introduction of new technologies new types of services and so on but what is also required is to be able to sustain the newer systems newer methodologies newer techniques that are introduced so what is required essentially is to ensure that the sustainability of the newly introduced concepts technologies methods etc etc continue so what is sustainability assessment in the context of a manufacturing industry is what we are going to go through in this particular lecture so the term sustainability means to continue at a fixed rate so a sustainable industry basically provides energy efficiency conservation of resources and low waste production so the last one particularly is very important so now it is energy efficiency is very important also because there is globally a global concern about saving energy and thereby saving the environment so energy efficiency is definitely very important you know reducing carbon footprint on the environment this is definitely very important but what is also very important is to ensure that the resources that are used in all different other terms are also conserved the amount of resources that are used are all conserved and the amount of waste that is produced should be reduced significantly so that will be a sustainable method of manufacturing sustainable ma method of production or development so let us consider the context of sustainable manufacturing industries so in the context of industry 4.0 the proposition is to include the characteristics of previous industry revolution in a much more sustainable way so not only that we want to introduce newer things but also we have to ensure that whatever has been existing from the previous industry revolutions continue and continue at least in the same form that it was before and also to introduce newer techniques methods etc etc and continue the same things in a much more consistent sustainable manner so that you know it is it, do, it doesn't become a one time kind of affair so industry 4.0 or the fourth industry revolution is a comprehensive is a comprehensive industrial revolution it's a comprehensive industrial revolution which takes into account this sustainability issue because it is not just talking about introducing newer concepts newer technologies and so on but also to ensure that there is sustainability in the long run so it incorporates industry 4.0 incorporates globalization and emerging issues as well so let us look at each of these issues in a short while what these issues are okay so when we talk about sustainability first what is required is to consider some industry in our case the manufacturing industry and assess the sustainability issues first of all you have to assess how much sustainable that in particular industry is in terms of its processes that are existing or the the uh, the processes or the product that is being manufactured so a manufacturing industry is considered as a base of modern industrial society and is the cornerstone of the world economy so in order to estimate this sustainability and assess it it is required to evaluate this term is over st okay so sustainability divided by sustainable development and what is this is all what we are going to go through in the next few minutes so how do you arrive at this s by st term is what we are going to look at so this is this formula that we are going to arrive at and before that we are going to look at the different parameters that would be required to arrive at this particular formula of s over st 
So, this S over SD considers different issues, different parameters. Some of these parameters are linked to the issue of globalization, which is basically considered as one of the important drivers of sustainable industries. Globalization issues affect the sustainability of any development or any manufacturing or any production system. So, these issues are one of the most fundamental requirements. So, as we can see over here in this particular figure in front of you, there are five different elements of globalization that are depicted. So, the first one is the business models, the next one is the energy price, information and communication technology adoption, supply chain management which is a very very important thing particularly in the manufacturing context and the inclusion of emerging markets. So, these are some of the important issues or the cornerstones behind globalization. So, let us take one by one. So, we will start with the supply chain management. So, supply chain management talks about consideration of the different stages through which the production system starting from the production till the supply goes through. So, it is basically a strategic function in any manufacturing industry. So, in these manufacturing industries there are different suppliers, the production system as a whole and dif different customers and each of these together go through different stages. So, the sequencing of the stages for the whole system is what SCM basically uh, talks about supply chain management. So, starting from the production till the supply considering all the different stages, steps etcetera. So, the most important stage in SCM is the selection for outsourcing components or parts of raw material. So, supply chain management has many additional environmental concerns as well. So, these are the issues that basically contribute to the overall sustainability. Issues of climate change, contamination, contamination of through the introduction of different wastes to the environment, contamination, resource consumption, how much resources are consumed, resources of all kinds, resources of all kinds, different you know human resources, non-human resources. So, all kinds of resources, how much is the, the, the resource consumption. So, the, the it is required basically to optimize the resource consumption. Right? So, these are the different supply chain management issues. The second thing is the introduction of ICT, information and communication technology and as we know that ICT overall is the backbone of most of the modern manufacturing industries today. So, if there is no information technology or communication technology, there is no communication within the enterprise and across enterprises. And this communication technology is required even to distribute, to have distributed communication between different people, distributed communication between different people, distributed communication between the different labs of the same organization, distributed communication across the different locations or different campuses of the same organization or even it is also required for having proper communication between the different partners of a particular organization who contribute to the manufacturing of the products or the services. So, overall ICT is very very important and we are talking about ICT as a whole in the greater context, in the bigger context not just the introduction of computers and uh, communication technologies, but also different other things that we talk about in the industry 4.0 context like you know sensors, actuators uh, and the connectivity between them and uh, the different other uh, uh, things. So, everything taken together. So, it is very required uh, to have communication between the customers, the producers, the suppliers and so on. They need to be able to share the information between themselves and for doing that with the help of these computers and computing technology and communication technology etcetera, it is required to enable enterprise resource planning, ERP based systems, then wireless communication technology which is sort of like you know why wireless is wireless is something that makes portability uh, a, a reality portability uh, of different equipments then uh, uh, then uh, mobility uh, bit across different uh, uh, between different uh, uh, 
uh, parts of the company between different uh, mobility of different equipments that are being used in the manufacturing process and so on. So, these are very important. So, wireless communication technology is very important. Second thing, a third one is the GPS which I think all of us know and the fourth one is the radio frequency identification system. So, with the help of RFIDs, RFIDs we have gone through in the introduction, uh, we have understood what RFID systems are and uh, so basically you know you need to tag the different uh, uh, parts in a production system or different uh, equipments that need to be tracked or different items or elements or agents that need to be tracked, you would be uh, tagging them with some RFID tags and that basically helps to have a complete monitoring and efficient monitoring of these of the mobility and portability of these different parts and constituents of the whole production system. The second, the third one is the energy prices. So, you know if you are talking about large scale enterprises there is a consideration of the energy, energy con consumption as a whole. So, larger enterprise means larger energy consumption, but that is not something that is sustainable and that is not something that can uh, that is beneficial for the environment. More en energy consumption basically leads to bigger impact on the environment and which is not very desirable. So, for enterprises it is very important to ensure that there is reduced energy consumption through the introduction of these newer technologies and so on. So, basically the energy has to be first created, the energy is then transferred, transformed into a different form and then gets consumed. For instance, if you are talking about electricity, electricity gets generated in the generating power plant, then it is transferred through different grids and transmission lines it is transferred from one location from the generation uh, generating station to elsewhere to the station to the electricity substations and uh, different other points. So, it gets uh, transferred then it is transformed before consumption it is transformed. So, one form of energy is transformed to another form of energy. So, in our example basically electricity is transformed uh, let us say that if we are talking about um, you know lighting lamps and bulbs in the in the warehouses then electricity is getting transformed into light energy right. So, um, so then it is transformed and that light is something that is getting consumed. So, this is just an example like this you can think about other energy consumption processes in the uh, in the uh, in the manufacturing process of any product. So, these are the different important issues. So, what is required is whatever be the cycle, however uh, the energy consumption and this transformation takes place, whatever be it, what is important is to ensure that there is reduced energy consumption overall and that basically will also have an impact on the, uh, the economy, um, economy and the environment as I said earlier. So, it is required to uh, have uh, energy supply also at reasonable price. So, increasing the price of energy is not good because if you are increasing the price of energy then that will affect the overall price of the product uh, or the service that is being uh, created and uh, that is not going to be sustainable overall from another perspective. So, increase in energy price affects sustainability and we have seen that different ways it is affecting it is not you know uh, sustainability has different different facets. So, what is also not uh, desirable is to increase the cost of the product or the service that is being generated or the uh, or being developed and also it is also the cost of energy if it increases it is also not very uh, import uh, it is not very uh, useful from the environment point of view as well. So, reduction in energy consumption uh, is also required and uh, energy consumption energy production can be done not only from the non-renewable sources of energy, but also from the renewable ones like solar, wind and so on. The next one, uh, the next globalization issue is the emerging markets and its consideration. So, markets are able to meet the standards of newly developed innovative products. So, the issue over here is that it is difficult to identify all the world's emerging markets and uh, so if you think about the emerging markets whenever you know whenever a particular product is being introduced right. So, so it goes through typically a phase of dictatorship 
dictatorship means like it is a monopoly kind of thing. So, the company which introduced the product basically has monopoly and uh, then gradually it has to transform towards the free market and free economy where it will be made accessible to the greater part of the world. And uh, so, the consideration of emerging markets is very important uh, particularly for developing uh, countries. Business models, you know we need to think about business models which will be helpful for the greater society, the bigger society. So, it is required to have mass customization. So, mass customization will incorporate the knowledge including the consideration of international culture across different countries, different societies and so on and also the local culture where things have been introduced and produced first. So, business, um, business models basically have direct linkage with the mass customization. So, what is required is from the globalization point of view, the, uh, the product that is manufactured should not only um, uh, uh, should not only cater to the needs of the local community, but also to the international community. So, business models um, are have to be developed uh, which should take the strategic approach by considering, considering the bigger issues, the strategic issues that means high level issues for a particular organization business and the greater issues overall. So, business models will have to be uh, strategically developed and uh, it is also required to have the business model which will maximize the economic profits for an enterprise by taking into account the competitive benefits and promoting the product value. Emerging issues are also there like the globalization issues which also contribute to the sustainability factor. So, emerging issues are there, there are many of these emerging issues which contribute to sustainability. One is technology. Technology, growth of population, government regulation, consumption of natural resources, and consideration of crisis, recession, and depression. These are the five different uh, five different uh, contributors uh, to the uh, to the sustainability factor from an emerging issue viewpoint. So the first one is the technology. So technology considerations are very important. So, if we are talking about technology, we let us say technology technology broadly can be classified as hardware and software. So, within hardware we have different types of technologies that are used commonly technologies such as computer. So, when we are talking about technology basically we have the hardware technology and the software technologies right. Within hardware we have different technologies in the manufacturing industries such as the computer numeric control machines, we have the barcodes, barcode based technology, barcode, we have different different technologies such as RF, ID, NFC, all of these are quite uh, uh, you know uh, used quite widely and these are the technologies that have also contributed to the overall advancement of the manufacturing industries. And like this actually there are many others also. So, in terms of software if we look at we have technologies such as ERP, uh, then uh, you know the GPS based software technologies right. So, GPS, GPS itself is hardware, but you know the GPS based software technologies and like this there are many many other software technologies that have emerged and have contributed to the advancement of manufacturing industries. So, these are uh, very important and uh, so what we uh, uh, need to ensure is that all these different newer technologies should be included in order to have uh, better sustainability. 
So, advancement in technology basically facilitates manufacturing with higher quality products, lower cost products and products which are manufactured in reduced time. So, these are very important. So, the quality of the product that is developed should be improved with the introduction of these newer technologies. Then the cost of the production should be less so that the overall product comes to the market at a reduced price and comes faster to the market. The production life cycle should be reduced. So, there is reduced manufacturing time. So, role of, role of technology advancement in the global mar market is about converting from the traditional system of manufacturing to the automated system and this is how the technology can help in this particular uh, in this particular objective. And also technology can help in having greater agility, faster development and flexible, changeable, maintainable uh, products. In terms of government regulation, it is also required to be able to protect the public and the private sectors. It is required to protect the enterprises. So, for protecting the enterprises, different enterprises have their own different requirements and those will have to be taken into consideration while arriving at different regulations and rules which can be uh, you know which can help these, these organizations these enterprises to offer better services and low cost goods. So, government regulation will help in, um, in uh, basically avoiding unfair competition and also to promote sustainable environmental environment considered development for everyone including the empl employees of the organization or the industry. So, government regulations are very important. So, let us look at some of these different aspects of uh, this government regulation. So, you know we have if we are talking about uh, government uh, regulations, there are different considerations or the different types of regulations. Some of these regulations are basically having direct impact on the economic issues, some of them have considerations of the social issues and some the environmental issues. So, economic issues basically talks about some of these regulations when a business will enter, um, when an in institution basically enters a business. Price estimations, there are government regulations typically which will help in this uh, price estimation. Then uh, social issues which will essentially help in opening channels between channels of communication may be between employees and the enterprise or the management and uh, environmental issues will concern the protection of the environment. So, for example, let me just take the case of this one because it is easier to understand. So, environmental issues are very important in the manufacturing process. So, government regulations should be there to protect the environment because you know if there is some kind of production process which produces lot of waste and in turn harms the environment, the water, the land etcetera are full of different industrial wastes then that is not good. So, there are government regulations which talk about how to reduce these, uh, these wastes and also the wastes that are produced will have to be handled properly. So, these are these the roles of the different regulations. So, there are government regulations concerning employment, advertisement, labor, 
labor laws are there, environmental regulations are there, regulations concerning the safety of the workers, safety of everyone, health regulations are there and privacy protection of individuals. So, basically the employment and labor rules represent laws concerning wages and salaries, things such as benefits to the to the workers in terms of retirement plans, compliance with health and safety issues, proper working conditions, issues of expatriate employees such as visas and so on, equal opportunity in employment in terms of promotion and consideration of uh, all workers from different ethnicity in the equal platform, provisioning of authority or higher ranking position. So, these are different different types of classes of regulations that are typically there in any industry. In terms of advertisement, advertisement regulations protect customers, firm honesty about a product, information regulation publicly, then transparency on distribution and manufacturing process. Environmental regulations or rules meant are maintained by different acts, different agencies such as the Environmental Protection Agency, maintaining clean air, reduction of chemical effects in soil, river, water of different, different water bodies and so on. Then uh, privacy regulations basically concern the you know the, the information, the safety of safety and security of the information, particularly the sensitive information that is collected about the different employees and the different other stakeholders by a particular enterprise. Safety and health regulations will concern the health issues, providing healthy working environment and also the overall safety, workplace safety and so on. So, these are the different types of government regulations. So, population growth, monitoring population growth is important for manufacturing industry. It affects the industry growth, food supplies, fertility, sociology, economics, politics, industry locations, use of available lands and so on. There are three different types of countries based on the population growth, developed countries, then emerging countries, emerging economies basically and developing economies. So, the population growth of countries developing and disadvantaged is typically greater than the population growth of the developed and advantaged, country, advantaged countries. So, based on the United Nations report, the population growth is from 1950 to 2050 reduced between 32 percent to 13 percent in developed countries and increased between 8 to 20 percent in emerging and developing countries. So, economic view on the population growth can be of two types pessimistic view and optimistic view. So, the pessimistic view of population growth basically affects the economic growth and the optimistic view basically on the contrary talks about increase of the global globalization issues such as trade and commerce due to the growth of population. So, pessimistic view basically affects hinders the overall economic growth on the other hand and the optimistic view on the other hand basically increases the globalization issues such as trade and commerce. So, population growth is a very important consideration in terms of sustainability. So, basically if the growth is not conformant with the overall uh, growth of the economy, then that will become a disaster for that particular economy. So, then the last one is basically the consideration of economic crisis, recession and depression. So, economic crisis basically takes place over a duration not more than a few months. So, that is the crisis. Recession on the other hand talks about the decline in the economic activity, recession that means slowing down, slow down of the economy. So, that takes place over uh, uh, you know a period of time and uh, that, that slow down basically happens quite fast, exponential decline happens. So, basically when the economic activities again increase, then there will be commencement of or the rise of uh, the economy uh, overall. So, basically from the recession, then there will be some kind of acceleration in terms of the growth. Depression is the extremity of recession, 
which is observed by exponential unemployment increase, reduction in available credit, significant reduction in uh, trade and commerce and huge number of bankruptcies might uh, also consequently happen and uh, there is volatility in currency value and the du duration is more than 2 years and this is basically the extreme case of recession. So, we start with uh, the economic crisis then that is that will take place for few months then recession basically it is a slowing down a rapid slowdown of the economy and thereafter we uh, have uh, the depression this depression basically is the extreme extreme case of recession where all of these things would happen. So, let us now look at the view of each of these. So, basically if we talk about crisis, so let us say that this is the economic crisis. Then comes the recession phase, recession and the next one is basically the depression. So, conceptually it would look like this. So, if there is economic crisis on recession, then there would be reduction in prices of different major commodities and uh, what is important it is to increase the productivity uh, and reduce the overall cost that becomes the solution in such a case. So, it is very important to ensure and avoid this kind of crisis and recession as much as possible. So, in terms of consumption of natural resources, this is one of the very biggest concerns because that has impact on the sustainable de development which is environment friendly. So, this is one of the biggest issues in contrast to economically sustainable development as natural resources are the main source of revenue in developing countries it is one of the major sources of social conflicts. So, basically concerns about too much of mining, too much of extraction of oil and gas, demographic shifts, societal behavior, politics, technology, economic situations, difficult economic situations all of these are major contributors in terms of the consideration of natural resources. So, natural resources can be of two types the renewable ones and the non renewable ones coal oil gas etcetera are the non renewable examples of non renewable sources of natural uh, in energy and um, then uh, solar water wind etcetera are the examples of renewable sources of energy. So, all of these things we have discussed because if you recall that we started with that formula S over S D and S over S D basically has all of these di different contributors that we have just gone through so far. So, for computing this S over S D which is basically the sustainability factor we have gone through all of these different issues, issues of technology, government regulation, growth of population, crisis, recession, depression and consumption of natural resources and their corresponding things also we have understood that how these what, I, what are these different issues and uh, what, are, what is important for consideration of these different issues. So, while we have understood all of these things we now need to basically look at this particular S over S D formula. So, S over S D is basically sustainability over sustainable development and for this S over S D has all of it is a function of all these parameters right. So, uh, all these parameters that we have seen in the previous slide and uh, so this basically can be again rewritten as, um, uh, as a function of all these i's and where i equal to s over e and s is basically the change towards the sustainability and uh, y is basically the exponent of the change towards sustainability s of e. So, this is basically the overall formula that we wanted to arrive at to start with we have uh, looked at this S over 
HD formula and these are these different contributors to uh, the different parameters that contribute contribute to this computation of S over HD and this factor basically talks about whether a particular effort is sustainable or not. So, um, finally, these are some of these references that you could go through in order to um, understand these concepts in greater detail. Thank you.